to this news. As we've reported a few days ago, the United States Justice Department dismissed seven of the eight charges brought against Venezuelan diplomat Alex Saab due to the absence of evidence of alleged money laundering. On this, Telesur updates the information with David Rifkin, a partner at David Hustetler and an attorney for Alex Saab. Mr. Rifkin, welcome to Telesur. To what extent have the legal proceedings against Alex Saab changed after the Florida judge dismissed the most of the charges? Where does the case stand now when he remains accused of one of a count of conspiracy to launder money? Uh, that's a very good question. We are proceeding with an appeal in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals that presides over the district court in Florida and courts in several other states. We are championing uh, uh, Alex Saab's diplomatic immunity that arises from the fact that he was and still is a special envoy from Venezuela to Iran. The uh, special envoy status gives him full diplomatic immunity. Therefore, no charges against him can be maintained. We have uh, every confidence based upon uh, evidence based upon uh, U.S. law and international law that we will succeed in this endeavor. Given this scenario, what could happen after the hearing postponed uh, to November 15? Uh, that's a very good question. We are proceeding with an appeal to do with his diplomatic immunity, which, as I mentioned, is being pursued in the 11th Circuit. The hearing really deals with important issues, but not the core issue of diplomatic immunity. It has to do with his uh, uh, opportunity to obtain bail and the condition and related to that conditions of his confinement. So it's an important hearing, but that is not the hearing that deals with the diplomatic immunity. Let me elaborate. So we've been in the 11th Circuit for a little while. We filed our opening brief some time ago. The government, which is to say DOJ, uh, filed two requests for extensions, which tells you something as to how confident they are about their case. They finally filed uh, a brief in opposition uh, arguing that diplomatic immunity should not be recognized for, uh, for Alex. We just today, about half an hour ago, filed a reply, uh, which is the last uh, filing at this stage that we're going to do. Uh, the government may file additional motions, but we are looking forward to the oral argument that would be scheduled by the 11th Circuit. As I've already said, based upon historical practice, the U.S. case law, and international law, we have very strong confidence that our position would prevail and uh, Alex would be released. You're insisting on Mr. Saab's diplomatic immunity. The U.S. Justice Department has said that it doesn't recognize Saab's immunity as a special envoy and that the U.S. has no obligation to recognize diplomatic immunity in the case of foreign diplomats accredited, I meant, to other nations. Given this, can you explain to our viewers why do you think this argument will succeed? Yes, the DOJ is completely wrong, and what they're arguing is inconsistent with U.S. case law. Let me walk through it uh, carefully. Uh, United States has an absolute right to recognize or not recognize diplomatic status of somebody who is being sent to the United States, uh, either as a special envoy or as a permanent diplomatic representative. The United States has no right to deny the recognition of diplomatic status in a situation where the sending country, which is Venezuela, and the receiving country, which is Iran, have agreed that Alex Saab is the special envoy. The United States is legally obliged, both as a matter of U.S. law and international law, to give full diplomatic and viability uh, to Mr. Saab that is contained in the 1961 Vienna Convention, to which the United States is a party. There's also a, a statute called Diplomatic Relations Act, 
that goes to the same, uh, uh, creates the same obligation. Uh, ask your, your viewers might ask themselves a simple question. Does the United States have any right to recognize or not recognize somebody who is being sent by France to Germany? Of course not. It would be absurd. And it's inconsistent with U.S. case law and historical practice. Let me tell you that the United States has always taken the broadest view uh, of recognition uh, of uh, diplomatic immunity of third party envoys, going back literally more than a century and has always championed this view, not only with regard to the U.S. diplomats, but third party diplomats. And we have in our briefing describe the specific cases where this has arisen. So DOJ's position is fundamentally wrong, but this is how the legal process works in my country. You have two sides, us and DOJ, who are gonna present our arguments. We're gonna have, we've done it in writing. There will be an oral argument where we'll go before the judges. I will go on behalf of, of Alex. DOJ is gonna have another lawyer. Uh, the judges will question us and the judges would reach their decision. And as I said, we have courts that are enjoy tremendous independence and uh, would look at this case from a standpoint of a law and law alone. So I think we would do very well. Mr. Rifkin, taking this into consideration, do you believe that Mr. Saba will succeed in obtaining bail? Uh, his eligibility for bail really does not have uh, much to do with his uh, ultimate recognition of diplomatic immunity. Uh, I am confident uh, that we will prevail as far as diplomatic immunity is concerned. As far as the bail is concerned, it is largely shaped by other considerations, but I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, this issue would be resolved as well. But I, I want your listeners to appreciate that they're very, very different issues. Can you explain the conditions surrounding Mr. Sapp's arrest in Cape Verde? Gladly. Uh, I've been advised by my, I am of course not a, a Cape Verde lawyer, I don't want to speak Portuguese, <laughs> but I've been advised, uh, I've read all of the uh, uh, proceedings in Cabo Verde courts that have been translated from Portuguese into English for me. Uh, I've been told by my colleagues who represent him, Mr. Saab and Cabo Verde, who are very good lawyers, that uh, he was extradited by Cabo Verde, uh, transferred to the U.S. custody before the final judicial determination by Cabo Verde courts, which is highly irregular, highly improper, and it's something that we have brought to the attention of U.S. courts. Let me also tell you one important thing. A DOJ argues in its papers, in its filings, that the U.S. should somehow be influenced by the fact that Cabo Verde did not recognize uh, Mr. Saab's diplomatic immunity. They're wrong on two counts. First of all, U.S. has an independent obligation as a sovereign country that has signed the, the Vienna Convention uh, and enacted the, the Diplomatic Relations Act, it has an independent obligation to recognize Mr. Saab's diplomatic immunity, irrespective of what Cabo Verde has done. What Cabo Verde has done, of course, violates Cabo Verde's international obligations, which is very regrettable. But the second point is Cabo Verde courts have never, ever reached the ultimate merits of his claim. The Cabo Verde courts basically said that under their constitutional system, it is up to the executive authorities of Cabo Verde to recognize or not recognize his immunity. And this issue is not, that it's not fitting for Cabo Verde courts to overturn the decision by Cabo Verde executive authorities not to recognize this immunity. Let me assure you and your listeners that that is emphatically not the case in the United States. I'm an expert in constitutional law, and I can tell you that under U.S. Constitution, it is in emphatically up to the U.S. courts to in recognize and enforce uh, the diplomatic immunity that is based upon the treaty that the United States has signed and a statute, which I mentioned several times now, called Diplomatic Relations Act. Do you believe, uh, Mr. Rifkin, that Mr. Saba was uh, extradited uh, to the United States uh, illegally? Uh, based upon what I've 
read about government ready proceedings and I mentioned that I've, I've read uh, all of the decisions translated into English for me and in my conversations with my government ready colleagues. I believe that he has indeed been extradited illegally in a sense that government ready violated its obligations, both in not recognizing his immunity as well as the mechanics of extradition. And again, it, it is is highly regrettable. And to better understand the nature of this case, uh, is this uh, US, uh, US uh, lawsuit against uh, diplomat Alex Saab as an individual or against the sovereign state of Venezuela? What do you think of this? It's, it's actually both. It's important to underscore that the diplomatic uh, inviability or diplomatic immunity, while Mr. Saab obviously benefits from it personally, it is ultimately uh, an immunity that belongs to Venezuela as the, as the sending state. And proceeding against him injures, of course, the sending state as well as the receiving state, which is Iran. It is an affront to the sovereign dignity of both countries. So it's one of those instances where the case implicates both uh, Mr. Saab's personal situation as well as the broader context that I've described in my earlier answer. Mr. Rifkin, thank you very much for your time. We'll be right back after this very short.